Hello, I'm Atubo George and I'm so blessed to be bringing God's truth to you today. Praise God. You know, it is just so amazing the things we have been talking about um, lately, especially this week, and how it's important we understand the mind of God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Now, I've got lots to share with you today, but before we do that, can we make demand for our daily bread? Are you ready? Join me right now. Say, Father, I demand right now for my daily bread. It's coming to me in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. You see, the things we are sharing, sometimes um, people don't sit down to think and follow through. Um, sometimes you hear a statement and you just go all out, especially these days of um, people really have um, a short span to follow through on things. So you're unwilling to understand the same thing people hardly study their Bibles. Now, it's good to study your Bible. Very, very important. Now, why is it important to study? I thought you said the Bible is our problem. Understand me. We study the Bible to know, and truly, what the Bible gives us is history. If you take this away from your understanding of the Bible, you lose it. The Bible gives us history. And from Genesis to Revelation, all the Bible is saying is one thing. God has a relationship with human beings and how that relationship affected the human beings. So that's why I gave the definition of the Bible as this. The Bible is a compendium of testimonies of people who received the word of God, what they did with it and how they ended with it. I'll take that again. The Bible is a compendium of testimonies of people who received the word of God, what they did with it, and how they ended with it. So, the Bible gives us a story of several individuals. But then, all those stories is saying just one thing. Man encountered God and something happened to them. The question now comes to you. If you're reading a book that says the men you're reading about, they encountered God and you believe those things are true, then ask yourself the question, have you encountered God? If you haven't, then it's either the things that are written in there is a lie or you don't understand what you're reading. Everybody, including Apostle Paul, he encountered God on his way to Damascus and his life turned 180 degrees. I mean, he was going somewhere to go and do some damage. He <laughs> praised God. And then he encountered the Lord Jesus Christ and taunted the, the, the people he went, he was going to arrest and kill. Now he turned around and was preaching the same Jesus that those people were preaching. What does that tell you? Beyond everything Paul shared, beyond everything, everything he did, take this from him. Something happened when he met the Lord Jesus Christ. Everyone in scripture that we read about, the prophets of old, they became prophets because they met Jesus. The life of Abraham, Abraham's life went in the direction it did because he met the Lord. If you take that out, because I see um, and sometimes it's important we share these things. Salvation is personal, yes. But then in, in, in that's your personal salvation. 
what are you doing in that your little space? In that your personal space? What are you doing with yourself? You see, a lot of us live a life trying to measure up with the rules and regulations men have set up, okay? Remember I was talking about this yesterday, that the church started with the Holy Spirit. But then when you study the scriptures, study the book of Acts, you realize that the church got to a certain point where men began to regulate the church, the church activities. So I talked about how Peter went to Cornelius and came back and had to explain to the elders. Paul was preaching all around the world. And, and then he went to Jerusalem and he had to face the elders who, who actually allow me to say this truth, who actually put him in trouble. Praise God. Yes, it is in obeying the apostles in Jerusalem, the elders in Jerusalem, that put Paul in trouble. He got back to Jerusalem and guess what? They say, hey, brother Paul, I, I'm funny enough, you see, exactly what Prophet Agabus said to Paul was what happened to him. Prophet Agabus said to him, that was the last prophecy he received before he left for Jerusalem. Prophet Agabus said to him, took his girdle and, and tied his hands and his legs and said, this is how the Jews in Jerusalem will tie the hands and leg of the owner of this ghetto. And they will hand him over to the Gentiles. Now Paul heard all those things. Now that's a different um, um, day's talk. Because, you know, sometimes people, um, we, we live not just in a generation. The, the, the human beings are like that. We magnify men so much. Now, of course, give honor to whom honor is due. But don't forget, because we do that thing. I don't know if it's an African thing. Maybe it's an African thing. We do that thing where we exalt people so much and we believe they are above board. They are both, sorry, they are above mistakes. But you see, people live their lives before us. So we can learn from them. It doesn't mean they are all perfect. Even from their mistakes, we can learn. See? So many times we are afraid to speak of their mistakes. So we cover that up. We, we, don't, we don't want to talk about the, the, the mistakes they made. So people don't see them like they are fallible. But you see, history is history. What you've done, you've done. If you hide that part for people, you're distorting history. You're distorting information. And guess what you're going to do? You're going to build the next generation that will be raising their mind on a false hope. So they think that everyone is just so excellent. And when they are confronted with challenges that their fathers were confronted with, they don't know how to deal with it because they never heard or learned that their fathers dealt with such issues before. That part of history was shielded from them. So, Apostle Paul was on his way to Jerusalem. The brethren warned him, don't go. Now, why were they warning him? Because of the, the, the Spirit of God was actually saying, don't go to Jerusalem. Now, twice, the Lord Jesus had told Paul, don't go there. He told him clearly that, look, they will not receive your testimony concerning me. So I'm sending you far away to the Gentiles. And here he was going. And then this prophet came and, and said, this is exactly what the Jews in Jerusalem are going to do to this, to this man. He heard that still. And he told the brother, you know what? Don't, don't just break my heart. I'm going. I'm ready to die in Jerusalem. He, he made that statement. Now, was that a right statement? That's a wrong statement. See? That's a wrong statement. The going, the journey of Apostle Paul to Jerusalem was wrong. It was against the will of God. He was being driven by passion, wrong passion, inordinate affection. See that now? Now, this is Apostle Paul. So, he got to Jerusalem, probably waiting for the Jews he went in because the prophecy said the Jews in Jerusalem. Guess what? I believe the same thing happens today. Now, he, he was probably, I was not on his mind, but he said, I used today, how we act today, how we respond to issues today, to judge, see? 
So probably he was waiting for um, some Jews to bring rope. So, because the prophet is a Jew, so he was looking at when the Jews are going to gather and try to arrest me. Now, remember, he's been in those um, other side. He's been at the other side before. He's, he was there when Stephen was arrested. He was there when all those things were happening. So, he has that mindset. I know how they operate. I know how the people, these Jewish people operate. So, probably in his mind, he has already calculated when, when they try this, this is exactly what I'm going to do. You remember Paul one time to escape he was in a gathering and there was this argument and it got so tense and he knew that they were going to take him up. And guess what he did? He shouted, I'm a Pharisee <laughs> and I believe in the resurrection of the dead. Ah, it caused confusion. Now, now was Paul really a Pharisee? Of course, he don't know. But see, he used that to break the crowd. Because in that crowd, there was Pharisee. There were Pharisees and there were Sadducees and they were both attacking him. And knowing that this thing is getting tensed, so he had to break the crowd and say, hey, I'm a Pharisee. He took side with one group. Now, what happened? Then the Pharisees just said, oh, we have to shield our own. We have to shield. And, and that's how, now that's wisdom. You understand what I'm saying? He displayed wisdom in that air. Now, will you read that and say, hey, can you imagine Paul did not profess Christ? He said he was a Pharisee. You understand what I'm saying? And for those of you who follow the letters, you will accuse him. Now let's go back to this, this whole story of going to Jerusalem. So he got to Jerusalem and guess what? The elders in the church sent for him and said, Oh, brother Paul, thank God you're here. You know, there's this story going around that you have been preaching against the, the, the laws of Moses. And you've been telling people not to obey the laws of Moses. And we, we know you. You see, now, you remember Peter had spoken and said some of Paul's teachings are had to be understood. You see, Peter said that. And then Peter said, people who are unlearned, you see, they rest. On, on, now, they stumble. Now, not that the teachings of Apostle Paul is wrong, but you see, um, uh, there tend to be the way it flows a kind of an imbalance I want you to follow me a kind of an imbalance so if you just take it on one way and run with it you're going to end up in a big challenge so if you want to follow Apostle Paul's teachings there's, there's a level of maturity that you, that you operate in that creates the balance in you See that now. So now, so the story was there that Paul was telling people not to obey the law of Moses. But then why didn't they themselves as the, the uh, apostles and elders, why didn't they accuse Paul of the same thing? Because they knew Paul. They knew Paul was not living his life against the law of Moses. They understood his message, but generality of the crowd don't understand the law of Moses or don't understand the teachings of Paul. Now they are, uh, they, they, they understand the rules. They understand everything Moses have told us to do. Just like Jesus coming and, 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 and Jesus, you know, the Pharisees, they say, how can you heal somebody on the Sabbath day? How can you tell somebody to take up his bed on the Sabbath day to, to walk? And Jesus had to explain to them, hey, <laughs> the Sabbath was not made for man. Man, man was not made for the Sabbath. The Sabbath was made for man. And then now, okay, so Jesus had to say, this woman I just healed. Remember he, when he healed the woman that was bowed over? He said, ought not this woman, being a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan had bound all these 18 years, be healed on the Sabbath day? So he healed on the Sabbath day and some people were murmuring. See, the, the governor of the synagogue, or let's say the pastor of the synagogue, seeing that healing, he made an announcement. There are six days of the week, you know. On those days, you can come to be healed, not on the Sabbath day. Jesus looked at him and said, will you kill? Because if Jesus had not addressed that issue there and then, that woman probably would have gone home with condemnation in her heart. And guess what? The sickness was going to come back. 
Oh, I spoiled church today. Hey, God should, God should have mercy on me. Oh. I spoiled church today. Are you getting it? Now, now wh why, did they say, why did they say that? Because of their understanding of the law of Moses. So the same thing was happening here. So Paul, you, 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 are, you, are, you are disfiguring the law of Moses. So they said, um, Apostle Paul, you know, to douse all this tension, this is what we have come up with that you should do, you know, so that people don't take you out of context. See, good advice like it seemed. But brothers and sisters, do you know that was when the Jews in Jerusalem bound his hands and his legs? They bound him with their religious tradition. And he willingly gave them his hands and gave them his legs. And they led him into the temple. And guess what? An opera began in, began in that temple. The Jews led him into that temple at that time. And an opera took up, rose up in the temple. The Romans came and took him away from them. And that's how he was in prison for a very long time. Did you get that? Now, you know, someone would look at the prophecy of Agabus and say, but it never came to pass now. They didn't tie, they never tied Paul's hands and legs. See, now that's the thing. When, when prophecy is being given, sometimes it's given in parables. But when you examine it again, see, now you, you begin to examine it with the mind of, Lord, were you trying to scare Paul? And then the Lord begins to open and No, it happened. See what happened there. Oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> you see that now? Now, these were the elders. They gave him counsel. Counsel. Were the elders walking by the Spirit of God? The answer, of course, is no. They were walking by the the uh, doctrine and that's one problem when people talk about doctrine a doctrine cannot go beyond your understanding the question then is is your understanding complete so people form doctrines please listen to what i'm sharing with you because it's important people form doctrines based on their understanding today now tomorrow when their understanding increases it is difficult for them to go back and change their doctrine See, because now they've made people to believe that this is law, that this is life. I wish we can become dynamic. And I wish you can let it be, be clear that, look, this is what we know for now. The story comes to mind. I think in the book of Numbers, or is it, I think Numbers, two sisters, they had lost their father. Their father was, had inheritance. And now the problem was, who takes the inheritance of the father? So, on the normal day, the brother of the father takes everything because they were, he had no son. So, these daughters went to Moses and said, Moses, we don't think it is right for our father's inheritance not to be given to us. And Moses looked at it, the whole situation. He didn't, have, he didn't have what to say to them. This is a real life situation now. In the laws, all the laws they had, nothing the lord never gave room for such an occasion because the jewish tradition favors the men see so they went to moses and moses did the smartest thing he said let me go pray about it and that's the smartest thing moses did he didn't say well according to our doctrine our tradition you know it's sad your father does didn't have a son but you know, maybe when not any of you get married and have a son, he can come back and reclaim the inheritance. Moses said, no, let me go pray. And that's what the church is supposed to be doing today. Let's go pray. When Moses went to the Lord, what happened? The Lord spoke to Moses and said, those ladies are right. Give them their inheritance. Then it became a law. You see that now? So our knowledge is limited. So the doctrines we have formed, there is a great possibility that they are all limited. And as life changes, 
as the dynamics of life evolves, instead of us to try to force our, you know, as was it Monday I said that, forcing new wines in old bottles. Instead of us to go back to the Lord, now that's the laziness in Christianity. Because there's something I always say, the one we are following is alive, he's not dead. So we are not living by a book, will written by a dead man. So we have to stick to what he said. Uh-uh. What is he saying today? Yes, he said a lot here. Yes, but then, now I have a challenge. I'm dealing with life. And life is evolving. Is he locked to this book? The answer is no. So when I remain locked to this book, the result is death. Even though, the giver of this book gave life. That's what I was explaining to you yesterday. Jesus said, you're unwilling to come to me so that you will have life. We come to Jesus to have life. Today, you, go, you know, instead of accusing, you know, someone preaches a message and someone comes and says, oh, that preacher is wrong. How do you know it's wrong? How do you know it's wrong? The Bible said, see, you, you didn't find that from the picture. How did you get what you're getting? Now, if he explains to you and you're not satisfied with his explanation, you go pray. You go pray. Let the Spirit of God tell you he's wrong. Then you come back to him and say, brother, that thing you said to me yesterday, I actually went to prayer. And the Holy Spirit will not just tell you he's wrong. The Holy Spirit will show you why he's wrong. He will give you instances. And then you share with the brother, that thing you said, this is what the Holy Spirit said to me. Let's not talk what was said before. Let's talk about what is said now. Because the one we follow is our life today. Thank you, Holy Spirit. You know, my time is up. Let's talk to the one who's alive today. God bless you. I'll see you tomorrow.